inflation is up 15%. Some people are saying, we're going to talk about that today because mom and I are here to tell you that inflation is not the problem. It's not the main problem, yeah. So a lot of people don't want to hear that. We've been doing this for 25 years. I don't know how many recessions we've gone through, how many inflations we've mm -hmm. gone through, but inflation is not the problem. Now, let's give you some actual numbers here real quick you need to refocus from get, everybody wants to look at inflation because that's a good excuse not to look at the real stuff that's real happening problem. with their yeah their finances so here's some real numbers let's say you work 40 miles let's say you drive 40 miles a day to work at 20 miles a gallon that is 10 gallons of gas a week driving to work when gas was two dollars a gallon that was $80 a week. Gas at $4 a gallon, which is what it is here in Wyoming right now, $160 a month. So it's doubled. $6 a, a gallon would be $240 a month. So depending on where you live, we totally understand different people have different you know, prices in gas. California is not gonna be the same as Wyoming. Let's say food. Food, let's say your food budget has gone up $50 a month. Now, I got a little bit of bad news. <laughs> I know food has gone up, but it has not doubled or tripled. It really hasn't. It has gone up on some things 10%. Meat has gone up higher, but there are still lots and lots of meats that are super cheap. I mean, I mean, just today, 69 cents is what I normally pay for chicken quarters. 78 cents a pound yes it's gone up but 78 cents a pound for meat is really really cheap well i think what's going up in price is the special stuff yeah you know what i mean mm -hmm. the more expensive Perfect. stuff and people are noticing it even more mm -hmm. it was expensive to start out with and now it's gone up and now they're panicking yeah. and the common <laughs> what i call you know your bread Lord, your flour yeah. all of those things are actually staying you know, they're slightly going up slightly, yeah. but not extremely mm -hmm. high yeah. where you can't afford it. Yeah. yeah. Next, uh, $100, let's say you spend an extra $100 on things like paper towels, which you shouldn't be buying anyway, but <laughs> things like deodorant, toothpaste, all of your necessity things, that soaps, those kinds of shampoos, all those will give you another $100 a month for inflation for that. And then let's say you're $100 more, our taxes just went up on our house because the housing has gone up here. Let's say another $100 a month on houses. So, on um, housing, $450 a month total. I'll give you 50 bucks a month total. Give you a little extra gas for running around for errands and stuff like that. But guys, I think I did actually put extra gas in there. Yeah, I put an extra $40 for, for errands. So that totals about $450 a month. So let's just say $500 a month. Now, $500 a month is a significant chunk of change. I'm not gonna tell you $6,000 a year isn't anything, but if $500 a month is going to break the bank to the point where you can't possibly pay any of your bills, you have either an income problem or a spending problem because the majority of Americans make more than $50,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And that's on the low end. The average income for the American household is $87,000 a year. <laughs> and I know all those people don't live in California and New York City. So where is the problem? Why is inflation not the problem? but your income or spending is a problem. Well, first of all, let me give you a Bible verse, okay? Proverbs 22, three. A prudent man foresees the difficulties ahead and prepares for them. The simpleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. Proverbs 21, five. The plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty only comes to poverty. Now, what are these things saying? They're saying, the Bible tells you, you have to plan ahead so that when things like this happen, it's not a huge crisis for you and you can still take care of your family, which is another 
Bible verse, 1 Timothy 5, 8. But if anyone does not provide for his relatives, especially for members of his household, he has denied, denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So That's pretty heavy, guys. What you're saying is that, first of all, most of you should have been preparing for this a long time ago. Yeah. We've been talking about it, but you've just been spending, spending. You've not got your houses paid off. You've not got, you know, well, you don't even savings. have your car loans paid no. off. Or uh -uh. your student loans or your credit cards. And so it's really bad because now when things are going up a little bit, now you're at the point where we told you things were going to be and you need to be prepared and you're not prepared. But it's still not too late. No. Never never think it's too late. You can stay, it'll be a little bit harder for you. And you may have to give up more than somebody like us that's been preparing. I mean, we haven't noticed a huge difference in our life, even though I live, and we're gonna get this. I live on, so my mom lives on Social Security. $400, $500 is gonna be horrible for her. When I moved here, I was on Social, I still am on Social Security. And I immediately had $400 more for medical stuff that I had to pay. That was just the medical. And I've had about $100 more on top of that of other things that I've had to pay. So I had $500 more a month and I'm on Social Security and I'm still doing okay, you know? I'm not desperate or anything like that. So, well, and okay, I gotta interject something here. We get this, well, I'm on social security thing a lot. Yeah. And let me tell you, now I understand there are people like mom. There's okay, became, first of all, there's gonna be 10% of exceptions of things that yeah. happened to, to okay. them that they yeah. could not help. We're not talking about yeah. you. So don't write a comment and say, well, yeah, you don't know what my thing is. No, 10%. The other 90%. You've been working for 40 or 50 years. Why have you not saved up enough so that when you hit your retirement, it is not a financial hardship for you? Yeah. It is extremely rare that you have the person that has a heart attack or has to have bypass surgery and their entire life savings is wiped out. Yes, those things happen, but it is not the majority. That's the 10%. Of mm -hmm. what happens. The majority is these things that we're gonna list right now, okay? Eating out coffees guys i know we keep harping on this but i am not exaggerating every single time every single time i drive by mcdonald's wendy's starbucks qdoba i go to buy the expensive restaurants down there the expensive yeah. eat out restaurants here in a tourist town yesterday yeah yesterday morning we went to church the line was out the door waiting to get into the restaurant. There had to have been 20 people in line waiting to go and eat. To a restaurant I haven't even been to because it costs so much yeah. to go there. But on the way home from church, two hours later, there was still a line of 20 people out and around the door. Every single fast food restaurant has lines mm -hmm. out the door. I asked our viewers to send pictures of the cars in line at their restaurants. It is all over mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. It's all over the country. If inflation was that big of a deal and people were hurting that much, why would there be line after line after line inflation? So, yeah, because everybody's worrying about how do I save on groceries, but they're going out to eat. Yeah. You know, it doesn't make, yeah. it doesn't make sense. Netflix, subscription sites. We saw a parody on income. It was a cute little family. I'm not faulting them or anything, but one of the things they listed in there was, well, we're gonna have to get rid of our membership sites now. Yeah, you are. I know people who spend upwards of 150 to 250 a month mm -hmm. on Hulu, Netflix, Spotify, all of those things. And that doesn't include cable that they also have. Or they don't have cable, so they use that as an excuse. Yeah. They say, well, I'm saving and not using cable, but they get like four mm -hmm. or five of these other things. They think they're only spending $15 a month on Netflix. No, you're spending $150 a month on all of them. Mm -hmm. So the membership sites, monthly car washes. We have a car wash that has a monthly thing here. Love it, know the people, they're great. But let me tell you, 
The lines go and go and go. I know someone who couldn't afford to have pay $200 for getting her car fixed, but she had a monthly car washing membership. Yep, I know. So. And we actually know the owner of the car wash uh, here. He said that people pay, it's $24.95 or $29.95. People pay that much and then they go through one and a half times a month yeah. on average. Yeah. And they do, people do that for a lot of other types of memberships yeah. where they think they're going to get a good deal going more than once. Yeah. And they don't use it that yeah. much. So be careful yeah. of those. The boxed foods coming in. Oh, how yeah. much of that do you oh, my throw goodness. away? Yeah. Uh, nails and hair. Of course. That's a given shopping. Most of our viewers don't have a problem with this. I did a survey and like 10% don't even. So I know most of our viewers are yeah. not you. But kids sports. Ooh. Now this is another not huge just sports, one. but any school activities and cell phones. Oh, my son's school. My son is the only one without a cell phone. And you know, has it made a difference? No. Does it matter? No. Has, no. You know? Kids, <laughs> all sports. these parents say, well, in case of an emergency, well, first of all, the teachers are with them all the time, mm -hmm. and then the parents go and pick them up in the morning or take them in the morning mm -hmm. and pick them up in the evening. Now, there might be one or two exceptions again, yeah. but, you know, those kids are pretty well watched over, yeah. you know. Yeah, and the few exceptions we've had that we needed to get a hold of them, I just texted his teacher, and she said, okay, and that was it. Um, kids sports, guys, this is huge. Now, I know our audience is older, but for those new people, I know people who actually spend fifteen to $20,000 yeah. a year. Yeah on kids sports they have they not travel they travel all over for the whole family to go to these sports activities and the uniforms and all kinds of things it's absurd mm -hmm. 15 to guys put that into perspective for some parents uh, for the okay let's say you make eighty seven thousand dollars a year between you and your spouse let's just say forty thousand to make it easier that is six months you are working as one spouse working to pay just for your kids sports yeah. it is absolutely ludicrous absolutely and ludicrous. you know a lot of man, moms are working in order to pay for this kind of stuff and they are stressed to the max yeah. and they wish they could stay home they're yelling at their kids yes and they think by giving their kids the sports stuff that's going to make their kids more what balanced balanced and yes. happy and all this type of thing your kids want you that's yeah. the bottom line. They yeah. want you more yeah. than any type. They can survive without the sports stuff, yep. the activities. They want you. And so I'm saying this so that you, if you feel like quitting your job, not you to feel can. guilty, not to feel guilty. You that can. You say, but my kids won't be able to have all this sports stuff. The kids want you deep down. They really mm -hmm. do. Half the time they're doing this stuff because dad, you know, or mom's saying this, you, you know, they're kind of yeah. pushing them that direction. And... This is gonna get a lot of people really oh, mad. Oh, we're gonna really get in ah. trouble now, oh dear. <laughs> right now we're having a baby formula shortage because there was a recall. Uh. Listen, moms, I'm sorry, but for the amount that you spend on daycare and formula and diapers, diapers. alone, you could probably stay, stay home. at home. Yeah. You just don't want to. And I'm really sorry, but I know there's single moms or, or certain circumstances. And those are the exceptions. Once again, that's not the rule. So don't comment on it. <laughs> but these are choices that you have made. And now these are the consequences of those choices. Because you have to take formula and you have to do the special you know, diapers and mm -hmm. stuff for the daycare center. They don't want you, you yeah. know, it's harder to potty yeah. train them, take them off the bottle, all that with it, working with the daycare. Yeah. So that's why we're mentioning that. And the that. daycare price alone. Oh yeah. Most Not even moms, to mention that. Yeah. I have figured this and figured this. Most moms are making a dollar or less an hour by the time they add up all their expenses mm -hmm. for daycare. The gas, taxes, driving gas, the kids to second car from the yep. daycare, then going to yep. work. So there's something else. Put that you your can pen out. to paper and figure this stuff out. Yeah, the real cost. So you know yeah. what you're really spending. All right, this next one's gonna get me in trouble too. <laughs> your wine, your beer, and your sodas. Now we're hitting wine because that's what the majority of our uh, audience is at right now. <laughs> 
Guys, you have a problem spending $6 a gallon on gas, $8 a gallon on gas, but you're spending $25 a gallon on wine. That's all Doesn't, I got to say. Yeah. I have no yeah. sympathy. Sorry. And if if you had your money under control and were debt free, totally mortgage free, that's you fine. probably wouldn't have yeah. to have that one so well, much. Yeah, you know, you probably you'll be so stress free from no debt that you wouldn't have to probably. have it to relax at yeah. the end of a hard work day. You know, yeah. so. Um, all right, most people could cut the cut their grocery bill even with inflation by two hundred dollars a month if they would cut out things like drinks, sodas, Capri Suns, extra coffee, extra creamers, bottled water, Keurigs, all of those. If they cut out the drinks, yogurts, pre-cut fruits and vegetables. Did you know that's the number one selling thing in the grocery store? Are you kidding? I asked several, several uh, I'm cashiers. I'm not surprised. I, everybody, time thing. I go to something, mm -hmm. everybody's bringing the pre-cut pre stuff. Pre-cut fruits and vegetables, chips for lunches, that's number two seller, is the pre-packaged lunch stuff. Juices, creamers, expensive meats, like um, your boneless, skinless chicken breasts, your... Uh, High quality beefs, your grass fed beef. You're beefs. paying for them to take the bones out for you and to take the skin off for yeah. you. That's what you're paying yeah. for. And I'm sorry, there is the, the omega 3s in grass fed eggs and beef and all that is so minuscule. It's, it's so yeah. much, there's, you can't hardly even tell no, it's, it's any different mm -hmm. because it's so minuscule. So the excuse that, well, I need it for the nutrients. No, mm -hmm. it's not any better mm -hmm. for you. Fancy breads. How many people actually buy the 93 cent loaf of Walmart bread? Most of them don't. I'm sorry. It ends up being the same by the time you poop it out. What can I say? And if you want to learn how to save, check out our Dining on a Dime cookbook. It's 25% off now. Don't holler at me about how I'm trying to sell you something. I get email after email after email from person after person who says, I saved $200 my first trip to the grocery store using your cookbook. This will save you money. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you could actually cut your grocery bill if you wanted to, even mm -hmm. with inflation. Yeah. Membership sites like Costco and Walmart. Sorry guys, we have proved it again and again. It actually yeah. doesn't save money. Not only that, more. you spend more because you go in there and you think, you see all these cool things. Well, we really could use that, or yep. we need that, you yep. know? So you actually end up spending more. Yep. Even if their prices are lower on some things, you spend more by buying yep. more. Vacations, sorry, you don't need that vacation. If you can't pay cash for it, you don't need the vacation. RVs, toys like four-wheelers, snowmobiles, oh my all goodness. of those kinds of things. You don't need them. We had a viewer email and say that they went and they had a cheapy $2,000 pop-up camper. They went camping in the first week of May, completely filled campsites, and all of these were $100,000 RVs. Mm -hmm. This happens all the time. When I, a place right by my house, they had this huge long trailer and lined up on it are four of those, what yeah, are they? ATVs. Yeah, yeah, four of them lined up. Mm -hmm. So they not only have the four that, uh, that they had to buy, but they had to buy a long trailer to haul them on. Yeah. And do you know how much extra gas that takes? And then they need the pickup then to yeah. go to pull the trailer. This is expensive. They You're probably not complaining they have, about inflation. They have more in that alone almost than what yeah. my house costs, yeah. you know, and that, yet they say they can't afford to pay their mortgage. Yeah. Um, so comment guys and tell us what you would cut if you actually had to, but yeah, let us next, know the types of things. Yeah, the next three are the biggies or four are the biggies <laughs> oh, no. car loans. I'm mm. sorry. There's zero excuse for car loans. If you can pay a car payment every single month, you can take that money and put it in a savings account and pay cash for it. There is no reason to have car loans. Like I said, this is like a 1% where you have the single mom who just really is having a hard time or something. Okay, I'll give you that. But really car loans are not a necessity And you all. know, people have no idea. When I first got married, we had one car. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would have to get up at 5.30 and drive my husband to work so mm -hmm. I could have the car for the day to go do my running around. Yeah. And then I have to go pick him up for work and do things mm -hmm. like that it is possible just to have one car you know people don't yeah. 
And you we know how had to a, manage that yeah, now. We had a viewer email and she said, well, I don't know what to do. My car broke down. I can't get parts because of the supply chain issue. I'm spending half of my paycheck driving back to forth to work in my husband's truck. And she was only making $600 a month. And I was like, well, why are you even, even working? working? Yeah. And she said, well, yeah, it kind of crossed my mind. Guys, you could stay Think home. Think this stuff through. Write it down yeah, and figure it out. You could stay home and save $300 mm -hmm. easily. Next is credit card debt. Stop using the credit cards, uh. period, and get them paid off. Student loans. Okay. I'm sorry, this is a little bee in my bonnet, but they're talking about paying off student loans right yeah. now, and I'm sorry, but if they, if the government thinks that seven-year-olds can pick what gender they want to be right now, then 18-year-olds can read a student loan and figure out they're going to have to actually pay it back. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, if you're mm -hmm. smart enough to get in college, you're smart enough to know what you are signing for student loans I have no patience with this. Why should I be paying because you decided yeah. to spend fifty to a hundred thousand dollars? Why should my grandkids or kids who didn't go to college, you know, yeah. why should I have to pay for somebody else's yeah. kids to go to college for free? How how fair and just is that yeah. in the real yeah. it's not. If you're gonna be paying something off, pay off people who can't afford their cancer treatment. Yeah. Thanks exactly. very much to affordable exactly. health care. This really ticks me off when people complain and complain about their student loans. Yeah. You should have figured out that was your choice. You went to college. You should have figured out before you went to college if the amount you're going to spend, you're going to actually get as income after you've graduated. If you didn't do that, that's not my problem that you weren't smart no. enough to do that. And don't give me a hullabaloo about how well it's an education, it's so important. No. Cancer treatments are way more important yeah. than an education. I'm sorry. Lots of people survive in this world just fine without an education. Yeah. And you can get that other ways, that education. But cancer is another <clears throat> thing or any other serious yeah. Ill illness, you yeah. know. I personally know kids who have not gone to college and they are making eighty They're, to $100,000 yeah, a year. Very successful. Not going to college. So that's just an excuse this is like we said i know our little pet peeve but next one is new cars oh my goodness listen here's the thing everybody keeps saying cars are the inflation of cars they're so high oh what are we gonna do do you actually need a car is this a true need did you go and total your car in a car accident and now you're having to buy a car did you drop your transmission and your engine at the same time and your car is literally totaled? 99% of people do not have that case happening. They're just buying a new car because they, they want, want a, a new, new car. car. And they justify it. Oh, I'm making enough money. I can pay <clears throat> the payment. Not realizing inflation's going to be happening. They're going to lose their job in a year. Yeah. Then what are they going to do? Yeah. And Mike and I have needed another car for three years and we've been getting along mm -hmm. with our 20 year old Toyota Camry because I'm not going to pay the inflation prices and I'm going to keep that car going literally until it drops dead and I can't fix it anymore. New cars are an excuse even now with used car prices being double what they were three years ago. People still use the excuse, well, a new car's cheaper than buying a used car. Well, I'm sorry, but spending $40,000 on a new car versus $10,000 on a used car, you're not going to get it. Yeah. yeah. And we go to Walmart. Everybody says, oh, well, you know, that's just the rich neighborhoods. No, you go to Walmart, 80% of the cars are five years, five years old or less. Mm-hmm. And I would, I would really say probably 50% of the cars are two years old or less. And they're expensive cars. They're expensive cars. We're talking pickups that are mega, yeah. souped up, fancy, yeah. everything. I mean, these pickups are $80,000. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're not talking cheap cars here. No. But people have to have them. That is, as I like to say, a lie from straight from the pit of hell that <laughs> you have to have a brand new car. Yeah. Guys, inflation is not the problem. 
your spending is the problem. And if you have cut out all of these things, your income is the problem. There is not a shortage of income opportunities right now. People are begging to so, hire people. For people to work for them. They're begging people to work for them. Bottom line is inflation is just another excuse that they're now using, you know, to have debt and not pay their debt. Yep. That's what it is. It's just the newest excuse. I'm not saying that it's not happening. It might, well, that it won't happen maybe eventually. And you better get things taken care of now if that's the case. Yep. But it's just another excuse. And you get focused on that like a tunnel vision mm -hmm. that you're not focusing on. Okay, let's just say inflation's hitting like crazy. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. You're going to do all the things we've told you to do. And you should be okay. Yeah. Now, for those of you who have stayed this long, <laughs> we're giving you our Dining on a Dime cookbook, volume one, for free, absolutely free, in ebook form. The link is in the description code. Go clear through the whole checkout process and put the coupon code Dining One at the end. You have to go clear through the entire checkout process. Do not buy it if it charges you. We have a lot of people on their phones saying, oh, it charged me. No, don't buy it until you put the coupon code in. If it has a number on there, I think it's $29 or something like that, don't buy it. Put in the coupon code. It is absolutely free for you. Visit us at livingonadime.com to cut your bills today. We will see you next time. <laughs>